the finish of this match, which we're about to go over into, uh, does a 6.66, the sign of the beast. Well, Jerry Lynn shout out. Uh, yeah. and that's going to be the conclusion of Jericho and triple H. And that's going to be a uh, heads up with DDP and awesome. And a tank Abbott segment that nitro pulls in a 1.794. We just saw a big ref bump from Mike Kyoto. Now you see uh, triple H rolling around on the mat and up goes Jericho to the top rope. Shane McMahon knocks him down and here comes Bradshaw and Ron Simmons giving chase. This is going to be a hot finish here. And it was a big major moment. I mean, I remember watching, I don't remember a lot of 2000 because I just, it wasn't my favorite fandom year, but I remember watching this. I remember where I sat when I watched it because I couldn't believe what I thought they were doing here. Okay. So Steph has thrown the belt in now. Yep. Were Steph and uh, triple H married at this time? No, they weren't married yet. Okay. By the way, this is a sellout here, as you might imagine, 11,611 fans. Jericho yeah. got the belt, nailed Triple H. There's no referee. Yeah. Stephanie shocked. You can see the crowd counting along. Right. This is the first segment on the show. Here comes Mr. Hebner. And he kicks out. Triple H kicks out. Oh, that was pretty cool. Dude, it's a hot finish. Yep. Wait till you see what they do. Okay. You could tell he's a uh, Harley race and Ric Flair inspired at times. Triple H is he not? Yeah. You know what? Who I'm, a lot of people were. Oh yeah. How could you not? Yeah. Right. I think this, at uh, this year too, like January of 2000, you go back and you watch his Royal rumble match with Mick Foley, which is one of my favorite matches ever. I think this is the best physically that triple H ever looked here. The year 2000. Oh, how about this? Lion saw it. one, two, three. Jericho just won the world title. Wow. It's the opening segment. Kyoto took a bump. Triple H attacked the referee. Hebner did maybe a fast count. Mm -hmm. APA preventing Triple H from going after Hebner. Stephanie's pissed. Jericho has the world title. Look at the crowd. Isn't this awesome? Wow. The crowd. I mean, I know we're not listening, Tony, but you got to go back and listen to the sound here because the crowd lost their mind. You know, they made Jericho to put this in context. This is April of 2000. It's December of Oh one. So like 20 months away before he beats stone cold and the rock in the same night to become the world champion. Because they're about to do a dusty finish right here and take it away from him, Tony. Oh, uh, of course. They go to a commercial and we think Jericho's just won the world title. Mm -hmm. We come back and we're going to see the dusty finish. That should have been, as you imagine, a DQ. You can't push mm -hmm. a referee down. Right. There's the lion salt. And that's it. Look at the crowd, dude. Oh, they are going bananas. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's yeah. So they're going to take it away from him tonight on this show. Yes. Okay. Dusty would wait until the next TV. <laughs> look at, look at the, uh, the scene here in the locker room for the announcers, which I think, I mean, not the announcers, but the referees, which I think is funny. Yeah. There's Kyoto. There's Corderas. Hebner. Teddy, Teddy Long. Long. Yeah. Oh, he's taking Hebner out to the woodshed. That's yep. what he's doing. And they are going, what, to the gorilla position? They're going to go out so it's in front of the people. Oh, in front of the people, okay. This is the era where they didn't walk you through gorilla. Now they have no big deal walking you through gorilla. But back then it was still like you're not supposed to see. you know, Right. What's going on? Because they got Hebner, they got Kyoto. Hebner's in a... Cobra clutch. <laughs> well, this is a great segment. I mean, just going and getting the referee out of the referee's dressing room. I thought was a great touch. Yeah. Nice storytelling here. Y you need villains. You need heels. You need someone to boo and you need a bully and you need someone to pick on. And 
you know, an underdog and they checked all the boxes with this. This was really well done. I thought, yeah. By the way, we should mention while, uh, they've got 11,611 fans here in state college, Pennsylvania, a full blown sellout for Monday night raw. You guys are doing nitro over in Rockford, Illinois. There's 3,177 paying fans there. The card that night, think about how crazy this sounds. Stasiak and Henning, Terry Funk and the wall, DDP and Mike awesome, Lex Luger and Shane Douglas, Jeff Jarrett and Scott Steiner. Funny. You should say that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because this was the night that I showed up in Rockford, Illinois and Scott Hudson was there. And I was told by Bischoff that he's taken me off of, of nitro because he thinks I'm overworked and thinks I'm stressed out and thinks I'm, uh, he was just reaching for straws, what he was doing. Uh, and I didn't mind it, but I really wish he would let me know beforehand before I got there. I thought that was pretty petty. So. Well, now you were still on the call. It was, it was Mark Madden yourself and Scott Hudson, but you were saying he added Scott. No, no. Th- th- apparently this, th- apparently then that happened before then there was a time where I showed up. I thought it was Rockford, Illinois that I showed up and they used Scott Hudson instead of me. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, I did. That's fine. And Eric said, listen, the job's yours. I just want you to take a break. And I, and it was 2000 and I was, uh, so it may have been earlier in the year. And I, uh, I took the kids and went to Disney for two weeks. Well, I don't know if you recall, but Scott Hudson was on the show the week prior, the April 10th show. And mm-hmm. unfortunately his dad, Scott Hudson's father passed away passed while he away. was on the air. Yeah. Um, that I remember. So this, uh, this happened earlier where I was taken off and I, again, just having me show up and then, you know, telling me I'm not going to be, I, hell, I wouldn't have, I would have stayed home. So, and I think what Eric said was, I was going to tell you, but it slipped my mind. I'm thinking, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, uh, boy, they are, they are milking this thing with Earl, aren't they? It's a great angle. It's an opening angle, but it's a good angle. And you guys were running another good angle at the time. Something that did get my attention is the week prior when Mike awesome showed up in WCW, he was the ECW world champion showing up in WCW. And of course there was a lot of maneuvering behind the scenes with WCW and ECW and Meltzer would even say, uh, the wording that Paul Heyman demanded and what was scripted for the WCW announcers to say has been confirmed as being identical from watching the tape. It appeared Scott Hudson was reading the wording. and was cut off by Tony Schiavone. (laughs) Of course, the idea here is, uh, Hey, he's under contract to us. He can't be wrestling there. And of course he's the ECW world champ. He shows back up in Indianapolis to drop the ECW world title. And what is Paul Heyman's idea? What if we had a WWF contracted wrestler? wrestling a WCW contracted wrestler for the ECW title at an ECW television taping. And that's exactly what they did. Taz would win. And then almost immediately appear on SmackDown with the now ECW championship around his waist. Yeah. Taz, a WWE employee was the ECW world champion. And that was all triple H needed to hear to beat his ass clean in the middle on SmackDown. Be sure to bring that up next time you get a chance to Taz. I'm sure he would love to just reminisce about the good old days about when triple H squashed him on SmackDown. I won't bring that up. (laughs) (laughs) Brother, can you imagine, you know, you're going down a rabbit hole on that deal. Yes. 